Hello everybody, it is Chazariah, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Pokemon Emerald. In the last part, we got here to the end of the Team Aqua Hideout, and we also defeated Maxi in the Team Magma Hideout. On this episode, we are going to confront whoever this random Joe Schmo looking guy is, and see if we can get to the bottom of Team Aqua's plans. You, who are you? Got here already, did you? We underestimated you. But this is it. I'm a cut above the grunts you've seen so far. I'm not stalling for time. I'm going to pulverize you. Okay, jeez, you sound quite violent, good sir. Oh, and you looked quite you look quite ripped. Aqua admin Matt would like to battle. Well, it's a step up from, you know, the Team Magma admin of Tabitha. Which, um, I'm not sure if you know this, is not a boy's name. <laughs> Sorry, Tabitha, but it has to be said. You do have a girl's name. But, Matt has all, well, and Matt has, as all Aqua and Magma Grunts, or of the admins at least, seem to have, he has a Mighty Anna. Also, as all Magma and Aqua admins seem to be doing, they're going to use Scary Face and Swagger on my Z. Oh, come on, please hit, just so we can have another time of them buffing my attack and not being... Oh, of course. Come on. Uh, come on, I want to see them, you know, mess up by using Swagger on me again. Only to have it one hit KO them. That's not one hit KOing them. Come on. You used Oda Sleuth so you can hit me with Scary Face when I'm already slower than you are. What is this logic, my Tiana? Well, I mean, I'm probably just going to end up killing myself anyway, so, you know, whatever. Or so How am I faster than you? How- What? You use Scary Face on me twice, and I'm faster than you? What is this logic? Game, you have no logic. Game, you are- you are without logic, and I am very confused. Yeah, well, Golbat's obviously going to be faster than me. That, that, I could have seen that coming. Come on, return. I've got a buffed return, so I should one hit KO you. Oh, so close. Fortunately, you are going to heal because, uh, well, you're, actually, that probably would have been a good idea to heal. Probably assuming they're knocked out, though. Yeah. Nothing you could have really done about that one, Matty boy. Level 35. We are one level away from our Izzy evolving. And I think you know what that means. <laughs> While I was toying with you, our boss got through his preparations. Oh, and there he goes. <laughs> our boss has already gone on his way to some cave under the sea. If you're going to give chase, you better search the big wide sea beyond Lillicove. But will you find it then? <laughs> so it appears we have been hoodwinked. Well, not hoodwinked, but we were definitely stalled. As it seems that was their plan all along. So, now I guess we have to be the one giving chase. Maxi went to give chase to Groudon, and we have to go give chase to Archie. But before- oh wait, okay. But, I think... That we might wait a couple of episodes to go give chase to Archie, because there are a couple of other things that I think need our more direct attention. So, firstly, we'll head out of this area here, and back to Lily Cove, and heal up our Pokémon. Also, as you can see, the guy training his Whalmer have finally gone, so... We are now free to explore the big open sea. And if you're one of those people who thinks that Gen 3 is, oh, well, more specifically, Hoenn is bad because there's too much water everywhere, and you're one of those, you know, 8 out of 10 too much water kind of people, then, oh boy, you are really not going to enjoy the next couple of episodes, because now we have opened up pretty much the entire water air, like the entire ocean of Hoenn to us. Let's just go and look over the map. Now that that guy has left, we have all of this that we can explore. From Route 134 to 124, and it's all water. Get ready for a lot of episodes that will take place along this outstre outstretching this wide open sea. But oh boy, are some of those episodes going to be really fun. But... Before we get any further, I think we have a matter to attend to. Rare Candy? Izzy? 
if you would be so kind, Vigoroth. Care to evolve for us? Here it comes. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Izzy the Slacking. And he's trying to learn swagger. Mm, I'm gonna decline that. Yeah, did not learn swagger. But yes. Slacking, as we saw with Norman's Pokemon. This thing can hit quite hard, but obviously has the unfortunate ability of Truant. But if we look at that attack stat, 133. That's at level 36. That is higher than any stat any other of our Pokemon have at this current level. It's higher than it's higher than Crobat's speed stat. It's higher than Absol's attack stat. It is without a doubt the highest stat we will probably see on a Pokemon this game. And you know what? I friggin' love it. And as a, an amazing Let's Player once showed me, I am going to go to the Lily Cove department store and pick up a TM that I think would be very useful on slacking. Uh, is it on... I think third floor is TMs. We're on the first floor, third floor. Pretty sure it's the third floor. Uh, let's find out. This looks like the place, yeah. I may serve you by... Nope, these are... These are not what I need. So I'm assuming it's the fourth floor? Okay, yeah. Yes. And it's at you, TM38, TM25, TM14, TM15. Also, we have power of fire, brutal snow, and wind attack that may freeze the foe. Hmm. Um, oh, we're gonna bump the mic there. Uh, some of these attacks are interesting, but the one we are here for is TM15. TM15 contains the move Hyper Beam, and as many of you know, Hyper Beam is a move that, once used, takes one turn to recharge, as the description of the move says. However, Slacking already takes a turn to recharge due to Truin. So some of you may be asking, who have played the newer games, why would you want to teach Slacking a move that would make it recharge? Wouldn't that mean that it would have to recharge and then suffer from Truant? No. In Pokémon, in the third generation, Truant and recharging basically take up one turn. So I can recharge and Truant on the same turn. Pretty much, so long as I'm using uh, Hyper Beam, I am nullifying the effects of Truant. This is a very backwards and underhanded way of doing it, but I don't care. I want an overpowered. Uh, what is it that you're gonna call it? I want the overpowered nose laser, goddammit! Also, normal types are seen as uh, physical attacks in this game, so, you know, even more power. Good lord. Uh, Swooper, would you be so... Actually, no, we don't need to fly. <laughs> Never mind, we don't need to fly. We can now start surfing. And with the introduction of surfing, obviously comes the introduction of water Pokemon, meaning that, uh, Dracoria, you might want to step aside for a bit and let Swifty take the reins. I think that might be quite a good idea. But yes... That was one of the main things I wanted to do this episode, evolve Slack, uh, Vigoroth into Slacking, and also pick up that TM so now that we can take advantage of his full potential. Also, now that we're on water, even though I'd love to show you all the new types of Pokemon we can find, I really don't want to be running into encounters every five seconds, so I'm going to put up a repel. I will, however, tell you what Pokemon you can find in the water while almost choking. Um, so, in the water you can obviously find Pokemon such as, uh, Wingull, Pelipper, the evolved form of Wingull, Tentacool, Tentacruel, um, I think you need to fish in order to find things like Goldeen, Sea King, Magikarp, and Gyarados, um, you can also find Pokemon like Whalmer. Also, speaking of Gyarados, here he is! Gyarados is the evolved form of Magikarp, and if you have ever seen the anime, you know this guy doesn't like to mess around. Um, Gyarados is quite a is a, quite a good Pokemon and will make a strong addition to most teams. Um, I never really considered using Gyarados, not at least not in Gen 3. In Generation 1, I've used Gyarados before and he's actually pretty good. Uh, one of Gyarados's 
I guess not signature moves, but one of the moves he's kind of known for, especially in the anime, is Dragon Rage. Dragon Rage is a dragon type attack that will always do 40 damage, no matter what. So, if you've got a Pokemon that has over four, like over about 80 health, it's going to probably be able to withstand 3 hits. And as, I'd, as much as I'd love to keep you out here, Nuzleaf, I think I'm going to hit him once more with Faint Attack, and I'm going to pull you out of here, because Gyarados... Mm, I'd rather not mess with him too much, so, you know. Uh, also, Gyarados is of the Water Flying type, so... Electric attacks probably are going to be really, really useful against this guy. I may end up looking at teaching one of my Pokemon an electric attack, possibly teaching Yami Thunderbolt if he can learn it. That would probably be a good idea. Uh, Gyarados also known as Thrash, and I don't know how he was able to know that I was switching into Yami, but I'll take it. Uh, we'll bite him, actually, just so he can try for flinch. Flinch! Hey, there we go. And we'll just quick attack him to knock him out. Or we won't quick attack him to knock him out, but he'll leer us for some reason, because, you know, logic. <laughs> but yeah, there are a lot of trainers you can fight on this route, and I'm not sure that I want to show all of them, just because I feel like it would be a lot, like, it would bog down, bog us down quite a bit, because there is a point where it kind of becomes trainer after trainer after trainer, and I don't think you guys want about five episodes of me trekking through one route, being stopped every five seconds for another trainer battle. I will, however, fight this trainer still on screen, and then I might start cutting out the rest of the trainer battles, just because it's going to be the same sort of thing uh, every single time. Uh, I mean, it, but if you guys want to see the um, trainer battles, then I will leave them in. Um, it just comes down to preference and what I think would look best for the videos. Oh, Bullet Seed is not doing as much damage as I thought it was going to do. Three. Can we go for four hits? We can go for four hits. Can we go for five hits? We can go for five hits. Yes. There we go. It's not going to knock it out, but at least we've got five hits off. So that means next turn, you are done, Meryl, or you're going to knock yourself out this turn. Because you're going to use Double Edge. Ah, oh, never mind. You almost are going to knock yourself out. Uh, double Edge is a move that has very high power, but also then hits you with a recoil. So basically deals about, I think it's one-fourth or one-eighth the damage you dealt to the opponent. Okay, there we go, take you down. So, as you can see, the screen is nothing but water. That's what this is going to look like for quite a while. We do have these darker patches, which we can't do anything with as of yet, but don't worry, we will be able to use them, or well, make something out of them soon. But if we keep surfing it to the right, we will find more dive patches. And we'll find this house here. Hunter's house. What is the hunter's house? Hello, good sir. I'm the diving treasure hunter. I'm the awesome dude who makes DC dives to gather treasures, resting at the bottom. You haven't got any treasures for me? If you see any shards, like the red shard, like the red shard, you've got to trade it with me. So basically, you can trade shards with this guy, and in return, he will give you elemental stones. A green shard will give you a leaf stone, a blue shard will give you a water stone, and a red shard will give you a fire stone. All useful for the evolution of Pokemon. And we need one of them. We need the leaf stone. So that means when we finally are able to go down and dive, we will need to be hunting for the green shards. Um, also, <laughs> about like a couple of tiles over, we have arrived in Moz Deep City. And, funnily enough, Moz Deep City is the location of the seventh gym. Leaders Tate, Liza and Tate. The Mystic Combination. Hmm. I wonder what kind of gym that could be. Could it possibly be a psychic gym? I don't know. Hmm. But yeah, in all serious, uh, seriousness, it is a psychic gym. Um, I'm not sure if we're 100% ready to take on the gym just yet. Just because Yami and Nuzleaf, probably the two key players in the gym, are still a little bit underleveled. Also, Dracoria is still a trap inch that needs to be fixed, so I think possibly in between episodes, I might try and level up every Pokemon to get them to maybe level 38 at least, possibly. Um, Dracoria I won't get to level 38 because I want to have his evolution on screen, obviously, so Dracoria will still be a little bit behind the pack, but at least he will be, you know, no longer a trap inch and will have some more usefulness to him. But while we're here, we might check out the locals, so whatever you got to say. I can't do this anymore. 
It's utterly hopeless. I'm a fighting type tr trainer, so I can't win at the Moz Deep, no, uh, Oz Moz Deep Gym, no matter how hard I try. Arrgh, punch, 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 punch. What? Don't look at me that way. I'm only hitting the ground. Or do you want me to teach your Pokemon Dynamic Punch? Dynamic Punch is a fighting type move that has the possibility of confusing a Pokemon. Um, it's quite a cool and interesting move, and if you've got a fighting type Pokemon, I'd probably recommend teaching it to it. But I'm gonna pass on this. Darn, you're even making fun of me. Punch, 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 punch. But yeah, and what have you got to say? Ah, it feels great letting the waves wash over my feet. Speaking of the waves, you know that island city, Sutopolis? I think the gym there had a new leader come in. People tell me the new leader once mentored Wallace. Wallace? Oh, okay, so the new gym leader's Gromit. Ah, oh, okay, interesting. But no, <laughs> no, all jokes aside, um, so it appears that the eighth gym leader is no longer who we thought it was, so that'll be interesting to get to. My little brother says he likes to go to find see people's secret bases. Is that so? You should make a secret base somewhere. I'll go find it. Well, considering that this isn't Oras and secret bases weren't yet the amazing thing that they once uh, that they would eventually become, I'm gonna take a pass on that. What have you got to say? I've got this from Steven, but I don't know what it's good for. I think it's called King's Rock. Do you want it? Um, it does. Uh, yeah, I'll take it. Why would you want it? You're weird. You can keep it, but keep it a secret from Steven. We obtained the King's Rock. Now, this has not really much use for us now, but in the post game, this King's Rock can be used to evolve two types of Pokemon. It can be used to evolve Slow uh, Poke into Slow King, or Polly Whirl into Polly Wrath. Both, uh, Polly Wrath, Polly Whirl into Polly Toad. Both quite good Pokemon. Hmm, your Nuzleaf. It likes green Pokeblocks, doesn't it? No, I'm positive of it. It definitely likes green Pokeblocks. Okay, cool story, bro. My husband can tell what kind of Pokeblocks a Pokemon likes at a glance. Ah, so that would be why. Also, we see that the TV is on, so perhaps we should take a look. In search of trainers. Gabby. Hi, today I'm visiting an area near Route 120. We're trying to spot some up-and-coming new talent in the field. Today we turned our lens on the po Pokemon trainer, Jack. There's something about this trainer that piqued our interest. We've battled Jack before, but we can attest that the trainer has most definitely improved from before. I knew we were onto some uh, someone special when we spotted this trainer. The best way to determine how strong a trainer is? Well, the fastest way is to battle, and so we began our investigation. That's how we ended up in a battle with Jack. In a dominating performance, we were flattened, rolled up, and tossed aside. Jack is ruthlessly strong. Here's our impressions after having battled our featured trainer. The combination of Vigoroth, Vigoroth and Marshdump was divine. The sight of them, Vigoroth and Marshdump, selflessly supporting each other in the thick of battle. It was a marvelous sight to behold. Return was the move the, the trainer used last in our battle. The move Return is Vigoroth and Marshdump's sign of friendship. Well, it makes sense. It makes sense. Return actually does more damage depending on how friendly you are to your Pokemon, so that actually fits quite well. After our battle, we asked Jack for a succinct summary. The trainer replied, Versus. Shameless promotion! <laughs> Jack's Pokemon, Vigoroth, Marshdump, and Versus. Hmm, that's deep. There's deep significance behind that quote. It's no surprise, good trainer has good things to say. That's all for today. See you again on our next broadcast. Hmm. Just goes to show that, uh, you know, shameless promotion really has gotten too far these days. But I think that we will end off the episode here. So, if you enjoyed this, please leave a like down below and a comment if you so wish. I read every single comment and I will be sure to reply to them as well. And yeah, if you want to see the rest of the series or just like my content, be sure to subscribe. I make uh, Pokemon videos about every second day of the week and Dark Souls videos come out on Mondays. Also, new top 10s come out basically once a month, so keep your eyes filled for those. Anyway guys, I have been Charles Raya, I hope you have enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next part. Bye bye.